So I actually came into college with a shoulder injury, tore my labrum, and six months after the initial surgery, I tore it again. I underwent an open surgery, and um, that was a pretty serious deal because pain is a huge thing in trying to control the pain in a way that you can get back acclimated into school and, and daily life is, is, a, is a big focus. In a study of about 20,000 U.S. 12th graders, they found that over 8% of them had misused prescription opioids and almost 1% of them had used heroin in the past year. They found that wrestlers and weightlifters had higher odds of misusing prescription opioids and that ice hockey players and weightlifters had significantly higher odds of using heroin in the past year. We think that what's happening is that athletes who are at higher risk of injury are also getting prescribed opioids more often, and that's why we're seeing this higher rate of opioid misuse. And unfortunately, there is a big opioid epidemic going on, and orthopedic surgeons are a big problem with regards to that, especially with post-operative prescription medications. When our patients or athletes take an opioid, they have no intention of becoming addicted. And unfortunately, it becomes just a cycle that's very hard for them to break. And when they're not able to get their hands on opioids, they can get their hands on heroin. It's much easier to get and it's much cheaper. And this is really where the downhill spiral begins. One of the misconceptions that I, that I do see sometimes with athletes is that they're getting a medication which is a prescription from a, a provider. So they think that it's completely safe because it's prescribed, you went to the pharmacy and you got it. But it's important to understand that the medication that's in that pill is really the same class of medication that's in heroin. It's the same that's in fentanyl that you see that's on, that's on the streets these days too. Prescription opioid misuse can take a lot of forms. It can be someone taking more than what's prescribed to them of an opioid. It could mean taking an opioid from a teammate, so a prescription that's not theirs at all. As a competitive athlete, we're kind of ingrained in our minds to compete at all levels and compete at the, the most elite level we can. And what that means is that we want to get back on the field as quickly as possible. We don't want to be out because when you're out, you're, you're losing your position. That can be devastating. And so a lot of times you are trying to figure out how quickly can I get back? Can I do anything to give me an edge to get back? Maybe use op opioids to mass pain and get back as quickly as possible. I would say that is a very real problem and um, it's one that does occur. And I think having that, that long-sighted vision um, can help frame the context of, look, you know, let me delay this by two weeks. Let me, let me recover the right way. Let me get off of these medications. Let me get through this surgery. And, and when, I'm, when I'm back, I'll be that much better. I'll be that much clearer. What we've learned is that after just three days of taking opioid medications after an injury or uh, some other procedure, at that point, the likelihood of becoming a chronic opioid user goes up substantially. We have actually done a lot of research on really trying to manage our post-operative patients with non-opioid medications, such as ibuprofen, Tylenol, and then using other modalities like ice, rest, elevation to prevent any pain they may be having post-operative. Anytime an athlete goes in for a surgery, um, there needs to be some type of educational platform for them to understand this is the correct way to, to use this medication. And if not, let's present the, the long-term effects that can occur. I feel like that's an extremely effective way to educate the patient. By the time someone is addicted, that's a lot more difficult to manage than to prevent it in the first place. The message has to be that we want people to understand that opioid medications are dangerous. They can, there's legitimate medical reasons to use them but that should be restricted to only those situations that are really truly needed. But once somebody is suffering from an addiction, we need to understand that it's a medical problem, not a criminal justice issue, it's not a character issue. Um, it's, a, it's a physiologic response to taking these medications uh, repeatedly. And treatment is actually very highly effective. And that's a thing that we really want people to understand is that this is a medical disorder that's very responsive to medical treatment. Education from a physician and, and from the parents um, and from other players, that's an extremely important aspect of, of going through this process because it truly is a partnership between the athlete and the physician and everyone involved to, to produce a, a great outcome.